Hey fellow explorers, I'm in Waikiki Beach on Oahu in Hawaii today and in this video I'm going to walk the entire length of this beach. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what I can see. We'll take a look at the hotels, the restaurants, the beaches and the scenery as we go. So we're starting here at what I'm going to call the beginning of Waikiki. Uh, this is the side closest to downtown Honolulu just off in the distance. This is in front of the Hilton Hawaiian Village Hotel. This is the widest sandy part of Waikiki and this is the biggest hotel hotel in Hawaii. They have tons and tons of rooms at that Hilton Hawaiian Village. All these different like towers you see here are all part of that one hotel. If you stay at the Hilton Hawaiian Village and you want the closest one to the sand, that's going to be the Rainbow Tower right here. Oh, they also do fireworks on Fridays out in front of the Hilton Hawaiian Village once it gets dark, 7.45, 8 o'clock, something like that. We'll start this walk along the sand because, well, we're at a beach, so we should do that. Uh, the next hotel we see here to the left is the Holly Koa Hotel. This one's a pretty unique hotel because it is a hotel owned by the U.S. military, so the only people that can stay there are people that are affiliated with the U.S. military, active military, veterans, so if you find yourself in that category and you're looking for a good deal in Waikiki, that's a good hotel for you. And the sand uh, is pretty wide here as well and the beach is pretty flat here too. Uh, Waikiki is well known for surfing. Most of the surfing spots we're gonna find a little further up the mountain that you see in the distance over here. That is Diamond Head. It is probably Hawaii's most iconic mountain and probably the most popular hike for people who come to Oahu. Really popular to get up there for sunrise. Uh, and see the sunrise from there. You get views of all of Waikiki. If you are going to hike Diamond Head, you need to make a reservation and pay admission in advance. Uh, so make sure you do that so you don't get disappointed if you don't have a ticket. All right, back into the water here. You see a lot of people just kind of chilling, standing around, cooling off. It's um, about 82 degrees Fahrenheit, I would say right now, pretty warm. In the sun with the humidity, it really feels more like 90 or 95. I have not been outside for very long and I'm already starting to starting to drip here a little bit. So I'm sure I'll be quite drippy by the end of this walk, but really popular to bring an inner tube and just float around. Now the umbrellas that you're in the chairs you're gonna see in Waikiki, those are typically uh, rented out by the hotels. You rent them by the day or by the hour. They are not cheap. Uh, so um, definitely like maybe shop around and look at prices at different places and figure out whether it's worth it for you to uh, just buy a chair from the ABC store uh, or whether it's worth it to rent one of these chairs and umbrellas for the day. Now this walk is something I like to do pretty much every time I come to Oahu take the walk from the Hilton Hawaiian Village down to the end of Waikiki. Uh, it's a good daytime walk. It's a good sunset walk. You can even do this walk at nighttime. And I'm walking on the sand just to give you kind of the beach vibe. Uh, but there's also a boardwalk up that way. So let's go ahead and head over to the boardwalk so that you can see where the um, more walking path is for people with shoes. Chris, do you have shoes on? Yes, I do have shoes on. I'm that guy who walks on the beach with shoes, but I'm also gonna be uh, walking around quite a bit today. This is the swimming pool for the Halikoa Hotel. They've got like a water slide over here and uh, looks like maybe a lazy river with a bridge. They also rent surfboards over here. You can get uh, lessons. And I'm, I think, like, I don't know. I don't know if, I, I'm gonna guess that this might actually be like open to the public to rent things, I think so. Dive Oahu and surf, so I don't think this is part of the Halikoa Hotel. All right, we're on the boardwalk now. Uh, so this is, when it gets like big waves, the waves can actually like come up onto this sidewalk. There's a nice little park area over here. If it's a really hot day and you need some shade, you can duck into under one of these trees. You know, the classic Hawaiian palm tree scene right here. We'll pick up some more grass, grassy areas again, as we get farther down into Waikiki. The, be the beach starts to get 
narrow here. You know, the uh, sand erosion definitely has not been friendly to Waikiki. And in some parts, uh, you know, hotels that used to be on the sand now just go right up to the water. Uh, as water levels rise and sand recedes, you can definitely see it in action here. Um, note, the park is closed from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. So if you were thinking about hanging out in this park in the middle of the night, uh, go find someplace else from 2 to 5 in the morning. Yes, uh, Waikiki does have a bit uh, of a homeless community that lives here. Uh, so if you are walking around at nighttime, uh, just be aware of that. In the daytime too, but you tend to see them more at night, uh, maybe as less people are out on the beach. We've got some uh, kayaks that are over here. Looks like the rental place for the kayaks isn't operating right now, but we've got a cool little snack stand up here. Uh, we'll take a look at that snack stand. Well, this, uh, this place is the same kiosk that was over there on the left. Let's take a look at what the prices are. If you want a beach chair for one hour, a beach chair is gonna cost you $20 for an hour, $45 for all day. The second column is the military price. So military gets a discount. Body boards, $15 for an hour, full day, 25. Uh, lounge chairs, which are the bigger chairs? Like this, the lounge chairs are 15 for an hour or $45 for the full day. Umbrellas, $20 for an hour or $60 for a day. I kid you not, $60 for the umbrella for a day. Waikiki is definitely not a cheap vacation destination. Here at the Koa Oasis, open from noon to uh, 6 p.m., or as the times are, military operated, you know, because the times are posted like this, 1200 to 1800. Uh, and uh, they've got the public and military price on the drinks, tropical drinks, about 13 bucks for the public, beer, uh, around eight to $10. Okay, now uh, here you can see the, uh, the sand has kind of eroded away from this uh, sidewalk a bit, so it is a bit of a drop to go down that way. There are some extra nice shaded trees over here, so I think this is the legitimate picnic area. Um, which is a, also a good place to get away from the heat. There's some uh, barbecues back there in the back. And then there's also like a, like a museum back here. I've never been into this museum, uh, but I think it's a, uh, what said the museum of, museum of Hawaii? The US Army Museum of Hawaii. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's a military museum uh, and not the just museum of Hawaii, the Army Museum of Hawaii. So there's a little, um, rock wall that comes out here, a little bit of a jetty. That's a great spot to go on and get some pictures or views back into Waikiki. Oh, if you wonder how they get these chairs out onto the sand, they put them on these carts like this that have these big inflatable wheels that helps move the chairs around on sand. A uh, couple of public restrooms here. Of course, if you don't want to use those, you can always duck into any of the hotels to use the restroom. All right, uh, right here, we've got a classic Waikiki Cheap Eats, the Steak Shack, where you can get some uh, fresh grilled steak and some rice. We'll go ahead and take a look at this a little bit before we go on. Uh, short line here today, but sometimes the line can be really long. Uh, so you can get the uh, steak plate for $12 for the smallest one or more meat for maybe 20 bucks for like 12 ounces of steak. Uh, shave ice, you can get right here. You can get your shave ice in the pineapple yacht. That looks pretty good. It's like a Hawaiian version of an ice cream sundae or get the traditional Hawaiian shave ice. Notice it is shave without a D, shave ice. Uh, and then in here, they've got all the different like syrups they would put on the shave ice. Okay, let's continue our way. Uh, we have a couple bringing their surfboard back up from the water. These long boards are quite heavy. We got some plants growing here in the sand. We've got some umbrellas close to the water. We got some palm trees that used to be here. Uh, this is a classic restaurant, uh, the Monkey Pod Kitchen. They uh, also have a location over in uh, Ko'olina by the Aulani Hotel. They've got a location in Maui. If you're looking for kind of a cool, family-friendly place 
to dine, sit down along the water, uh, definitely check out the monkey pod kitchen. All right, so uh, now as we see places where there is no sand anymore, uh, we're coming up on one of those spots. We're coming up on a doggy that's playing with his ball here in the water. Hopefully he doesn't shake his water off as I go by. Uh, all right, and uh, oh, that's splashed. Let's see, hopefully I can walk on this and not get splashed too much. Let's make a go while the going is good. Okay, shall we? Uh, I saw a little crab run in there. Uh, he was, I'm, I'm gonna say he wasn't afraid of the water. He was probably afraid of me coming by. Now over here on the left, uh, we've got some outdoor dining. Uh, there's often like luau's and things like that you'll see out here and live entertainment. You can enjoy it from the hotel side or you can enjoy it uh, just from this side on this cool little sidewalk. But I will say this is a zone where you definitely can get splashed. So do be aware of that. <clears throat> now, as we look out this way, uh, coming up ahead is where a lot of the um, sunset cruises will come in to dock. We'll see that uh, probably just on, or do they come behind us? No, they come up just ahead. It's not sunset, so I don't see the boats out there right now. But uh, this hotel over here, lots of uh, nice chairs, all kind of a white vibe over there. They've even got like umbrellas that they provide guests because, you know, Hawaii is this kind of place where like, you never know when it's gonna rain. And so you never know when you're going to need an umbrella. All right, this hotel is the Sheraton. There are a couple of different Sheratons. There's this one on the water. And then there's another Sheraton Princess something rather. Uh, don't book that one. That one's like back a ways. Um, and it's not, it's not super great, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's some people's opinions that would say, Chris, it is great. What are you talking about? Uh, but uh, you don't get the ocean view. Oh, this hotel we've been passing, this is the Hala Kulani Hotel. That's the one that kind of has the luau's in front of it, the pool, this big, just sort of white balcony-ish looking hotel. All right. And uh, because of the surf coming up, they've built this little extra walkway that kind of goes around to have a little pocket beach still in front of this hotel. Oh, that's funny, this lady's got floaties on her arms uh, to stay floating. All right, as we come down this way, we'll walk our way around the street where we've got some people lounging in the shade. It's a great place to get away from the heat because the difference between the heat in the sun and the shade can be quite, quite significant. Okay, so uh, this is where uh, it's a little tricky to keep walking. There's a sidewalk that used to be in front of the Sheraton that is now blocked off. You can't walk there anymore because they're afraid it's gonna row and they're building a new one. Uh, you can sort of hop over this wall, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, but the legitimate thing to do is like come down that staircase over here and then around this place. Tons of Japanese that come here as tourists. And so you'll see a lot of the signs in English and in Japanese uh, in a lot of places. The Sheraton has some fountains that you can shower off right over there. And you can see that staircase right there. The, that last step, definitely a doozy. All right, so this is, this is, if it don't like, when you're walking this way, don't feel like um, you're not supposed to, or you're like trespassing in a hotel. This is the legitimate public walkway along Waikiki Beach, brings you through the Sheraton Hotel. And at nighttime, by a busy bar, uh, they have a really cool like infinity pool over here that you can see. Like it just kind of like, Ooh, looks like it goes off into the water. That's pretty neat. Uh, it does get busy though, because this hotel is really, really quite tall. <laughs> and that pool is really quite small. But uh, you know, if you're paying all the money to stay for a hotel in front of the ocean, it seems to me like where you would want to be would be the ocean water uh, instead of the pool. But that's just me. This is the Sheraton's uh, breakfast buffet, Kai, open from 6.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, no bikinis. You have to have cover-ups and footwear. I always think that's interesting. You go like, what is acceptable in Hawaii as a beach destination? And it turns out not 
anything goes anywhere, any time. Uh, there are some places that do ask you to put on some pants every once in a while. The Sheraton has a nice uh, shopping district through here. Uh, if you wanna get some coffee, Honolulu Coffee is a pretty good local coffee spot. There's also uh, a neat Japanese convenience store just right over here called Lawson Station. Uh, but this is not a tour of the Sheraton. If you wanna see that, I have a whole video that's a tour of the Sheraton and I have a whole video that's a tour of that Japanese convenience store. But let's keep going along the beach. They have a little free library here. One of these like leave a book, take a book things. Uh, what do we got in here? We've got the life-changing magic of tidying up better than good public people, private people, and some random brochures have been left in there. All right, let's close that back up again as it was. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, and yes, you can see the pool instructions are in English and Japanese. Okay, they've got some cabanas that are out here to rent. I don't even know how much these cabanas cost. I'm sure they cost a fortune and a half for the day. But you know, if you've got a big group, maybe it is worth it. They've got some torches that light up at night here and that light up at night over here. This is like, uh, I think it's called like rum fire or something like that. It's the bar slash restaurant along the water. And this now brings us to where we would have come had that walkway not been closed. Back to the oceanfront walk uh, along here. You've sort of got like two choices to meander your path. If the waves are too big, then you can walk around the other Sheraton pool uh, or you can stay along there. I think the pool's kind of interesting, so we'll go ahead and walk the pool way. Um, I guess this pool's kind of go. This is kind of a neat pool if you're here with kiddos because it's got like a big water slide in the back and it's got a lagoon and it's got like a hot tub. And so, you know, it's much better than just a, just a gigantic rectangle full of water. And these are cool chairs. So this is, again, something to think about if you're coming to Waikiki, you're staying in a hotel, uh, is it one that has chairs like this that face the water that are free? Like if you're staying at the Sheraton, you can lounge at these for free. These will cost you money. And then if you want somebody to put one on the sand for you, uh, that's gonna cost you even more money. So that's the math that you have to do. This pink hotel coming up here is the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, another really nice hotel. Uh, like the Sheraton, it is a Marriott affiliate. And uh, they often have uh, some like luau's and things like that out in front. They have like a big uh, grassy events area. And we're gonna drop back up here onto the sand. Now this part of Waikiki is the busiest part. Look at all these people that are here. And by the way, this is where the Sunset Cruises come out generally uh, in front of like um, the Royal Hawaiian and the uh, Moana Surfrider is where you'll see a lot of boats that come up and dock. Just like they just kind of come up on the sand and then go out. Uh, let's go ahead and come down to the sand, sand water uh, barrier. Again, it's quite warm. Let's do a, let's do a check of how much Chris is melting. Do I have a lot of melt on me? Yes, quite a bit of melt on me. All right, that's okay. Uh, we don't need any more updates on how hot it is. You know, it's hot. That's why this is a beach destination. All right, so the uh, Royal Hawaiian has what I'd call the classic building, which is this one. And then it has like a tower over here. So beware of if you want the classic rooms versus the tower rooms. And then the uh, Western Moana Surfrider, sort of the same thing. The classic building is in the center. That's like the oldest hotel in Waikiki. And then there are these newer towers that are up here. So if you want a classic room, make sure you're booking one of those. You can see we're getting more waves here. There's a bit more wave action on this side because this is the kind of famous surf side. I like that there's at least one person in a yellow duck floaty out there. I approve of all yellow flotation devices. As you would imagine, I also approve of yellow sand shovels and I also approve of yellow stand-up paddle boards. When the waves are too small and you can't surf them anymore, then this is what you do. You get a really big board and you get a paddle to go with it. 
to make your own propulsion and then you don't need waves to push you around. Um, okay, uh, famous uh, restaurant. I think, this, I think this one's Duke's over here. I can't see the sign, but I think so. Um, or maybe it's changed names. Did I pass Duke's? I don't know. Famous restaurant on Waikiki Beach, Duke's. Uh, last time we were here, and I think it's this one, uh, they uh, like, the wait time was like a couple hours in the evening for a table. So it gets super popular on sunset. Us and everybody wants to sit there. Uh, so if you do want your sunset dinner table, you know, go ahead and make your reservation early. All right, uh, let's go up and check out the Surfrider Hotel a little bit more, because I think this one's uh, pretty cool to check out this way. And actually, this is one that we are gonna walk through. I think it's that cool, which I do have a whole review on this hotel too. If you're considering staying here, you can check that out after you finish watching this video. Uh, we've got a lifeguard tower over here no real uh, lifeguard towers on the other side, just as the busy, like again, look how busy, busy this spot is. So this rope uh, divides the Surfrider Hotel, the, Mo the Western Moana Surfrider is the full name of it, so I'll call it one or the other, from the public beach. So these are hotel chairs and these are just everything else. You know as many hotel guests are out here because I think these uh, cost you money too. Uh, yeah, you can see beach umbrellas are available for rent. Please see a beach and pool attendant. Okay. Um, oh, it's kind of cool. These windows here. This is the this is the lounge. So if you're a Marriott Bonvoy elite member, then you can get like breakfast and evening snacks in the lounge. That's right there. Uh, there's a neat pool here. But what's really, I say, most famous about this hotel. There's a lot of famous things, but one of the most famous things is the banyan tree that's here in the center. Uh, this lights up at night. They have evening live entertainment out here. Uh, this is a classic place to come in the evening and get yourself a drink with a pineapple on it, a burger, maybe some fries. If you're just looking for a classic place to chill, this is gonna be it. This is called the Beach Bar under the banyan tree at the Moana. Uh, in addition to the food from there, they've also got like a snack stand over here. But anybody can eat here, you don't need to be a hotel guest. Uh, they've also got a snack stand over here that has dole pineapple whip, acai bowls, and there's some cool like wooden rocking chairs to lounge in here. There are some more uh, restaurants over this way. And uh, so if you were looking to sit down, you could sit down uh, and have uh, waiter service at one of these, the veranda, which also has afternoon tea, or the beach house, which has steaks. Here's the cool lobby. Uh, I am here at the holiday time, so there's a Christmas tree. Check-in desk is over there. This is uh, the first elevator in Hawaii. Cool old mailbox right here. Uh, I think this was also the home of the first like telephone in Hawaii too. By the way, you can see it's like, that's how it tells you the floor is right there. Like cool wooden staircase. They just do a really great job of maintaining this whole spot. All right, I'm gonna take you out uh, on the street just for like a block here. And then we'll get back to the sand. They've got more chairs for lounging out here. This is the ballet drive. This is the, there's like two main streets in Hawaii. This is the one that's closest to the beach. Uh, it is one way in the way that we've been walking. And then there's another street in the middle, Kohio. It goes both ways. <clears throat> and then there's another street, actually, so I guess there's three. And there's another street on the other side that goes back the way we came. This is like a, it's not, I guess it's kind of an island or a peninsula. Uh, so not many ways in or many ways out. There is another uh, Lawson station here. This is the Japanese um, convenience store that I was telling you about earlier. This is a second, they have two locations in Waikiki. Uh, this is the second one. I won't take you around the whole thing, but uh, if you're looking for 
Ooh, some onigiri or some spam masubi, aloha, or even some shave ice. You'll find it here all at reasonable prices. Two, the shave ice in there is gonna cost you eight bucks for the small one uh, or 11 bucks if you want the snow ice. Okay, so this uh, kind of like area, I would consider this to be like the Las Vegas strip of Hawaii. I mean, this is at nighttime, particularly like, because the beach is done, you can't go in the water once it's nighttime. Everybody's walking around here, uh, torches that light up, lights, uh, hula dancing, fire dancing. So uh, this is quite, quite a scene. If you ever need any police assistance, you'll find the Honolulu Police Waikiki Beach Office. And if you have any questions, they have these friendly Aloha investors in their bright yellow shirts answer questions for you. Uh, let's take a look at this walk that we did. We started right here in front of the Hilton Hawaiian Village. We have walked by the Waikiki Shore, the Outrigger, the Halakulani, the Sheraton, the Royal Hawaiian, the Outrigger, the Moana Surfrider. We're now at the police substation, and then we're gonna walk our way to the end right here, where it's the end of the Waikiki Business Improvement District, or the end of really the sandy part of the beaches. All right, uh, there's another like snack stand that we just passed over to my right. There's a, uh, another dive Oahu surf lessons. There, the, these are the stones of life. There's another statue of uh, Duke, of the famous Duke's restaurant. So we'll go see him. Uh, he uh, was sort of uh, considered the father of surfing. Uh, so that's why he's got the surf monument here uh, in Waikiki is where he really started spending a lot of time surfing. People watched it and they're like, that's cool. And then all of a sudden, surfing has become a worldwide phenomenon. People come to bring their lays, things like that, and put them over here. Okay, uh, this is in front of the Hyatt Regency, um, which is another nice hotel. Uh, I have a review of that if you want to check that out later. Uh, I enjoy the Hyatt Regency. A good um, central spot. This part of the beach is a little, well, this, this part of the beach is a little less busy than in front of the Sheraton. And what I personally like about this part of Waikiki Beach is there's a protected swimming area. Uh, so this area right here that we're in front of, this is like definitely the surf zone. Uh, so this is where like all the longboarders are at, pretty far out. Nice mellow waves that come in. And then just over yonder is this breakwater that's been built to protect the beach from the waves. Uh, so if you've got kiddos with you or you just don't want to be battered by waves, uh, then this is a great place to just float around. It's also a great place to swim. So I like to just kind of like treat this as like a like a lap pool and then just do kind of laps back and forth this thing you can see it's like it's not very deep in most of it you can stand in most of it at the at the parts that are kind of like right in the center it is maybe too deep to stand like right out here but then you know over here it's like one or two feet and gets down to six feet in the middle this is the hula mound underneath this banyan tree they do hula performances here the Hyatt typically sponsors them, so uh, you'll just need to check the schedule as to when those are. Another lifeguard tower, and uh, behind the lifeguard tower, we have the uh, Waikiki Circle Hotel that's home to Eggs and Things, which is a popular breakfast spot for Japanese tourists. The line there in the morning will be like 50 people deep, of Japanese tourists to get breakfast over there at Eggs and Things. So if you were to come to Waikiki and look for the beach that you would find uh, Chris in and Chris swimming in, it's gonna be this section. Because I typically stay at uh, either the Western Marlin Surfrider that we passed, the Hyatt Regency that we passed, or the Marriott that we haven't passed yet, that we're getting to. And this little protected swim area actually has two sections. There's this one, and then there's a second one on the other side of that jetty. Um, 
but you can see the beach here is really is really narrow so uh you know you are uh, not going to have this beach all to yourself you're definitely here with everybody else sharing this beautiful common space now the other thing i like about swimming in this area is because the water is kind of like trapped here it's generally warmer uh, i find because like the sun warms it up and so for somebody who prefers to swim in bathtub water rather than uh, igloo water or snow melt, uh, I like the warmth of this. Now, if you're coming to Waikiki and you're not staying in a hotel that provides beach towels or beach supplies and you want some, the ABC stores are like this convenience store that's like everywhere in Waikiki and is the spot that you'll want to go to get all of your beach supplies. Literally, they're on like every block here, so you will never be far from one. And uh, it might be more worthwhile for you to buy a chair for the week you're here than to rent them at the hourly or daily prices. The girl who just passed us, she definitely got those um, mats from the ABC store. Probably this one right here. Okay, this is the uh, Marriott. They've got two towers as well. They've got this tower here, the one close to the beach, and then they've got a bigger tower that's there in the back. So if you want close to the beach and you're staying here, make sure to book that one. Over here on the right is that second protected pool area that I told you about before. Looks about the same as the other one. Water protected by a wall. Uh, we've got some bikes up here. Uh, there's this like bike share program that you can, you know, rent these bikes from this kiosk and return them to other kiosks. So if you didn't have a car and you want to get around, this is a good way to do it. Parking rates in Waikiki can be uh, exorbitant at the hotels. You know, think like 40 to $60 a night. Uh, depending upon self-parking or valet parking. So, you know, maybe not having a car might be a okay option. Uh, no. So, uh, they love their rules here for these beaches. And uh, here the following are, go ahead. The following are prohibited. Alcoholic beverages, animal smoking, camping, fireworks, tents, ball playing, literally fires, motorized vehicles, horseshoe playing, and shopping carts. And I feel like that sign has all these different, like, things they've added on it over the years. Like they never replaced the sign. They just like scrape off old letters and replace them with different things that become issues for them. Uh, but another sign, I don't know where that one is, basically says that like the beaches in Waikiki are for um, passive enjoyment only, no active enjoyment. So no frisbee throwing, football throwing, just lounging around. And your active activities should be in the water uh, all right there's another a lot of those bikes out here there's another uh, set of bikes they say there used to be like picnic tables under a lot of these awning areas but i think they've probably turned into homeless encampments over the years and so uh, i feel like every time i come they have less and less picnic tables that are out here and uh this is another like cool wall to walk out on uh, and so I'll walk on that as we take a look at the last set of Sandy Beach. Cool yellow car going down here. Oh just over this way is the um, Waikiki Zoo. There's a zoo here believe it or not. Uh, Leonard's Donuts Bakery from Malasadas is down this way. The um, Royal Drive-In, popular for plate lunches, down that way too. This Kapahulu Avenue is basically like the other way out back to the H1. And if you kind of like keep going this way on the street, then it wraps you around the coast and will bring you up to the other side of Diamond Head. Uh, so what's uh, popular about this little walk out here, this is another great place to view the sunset. It was raining earlier today, so you could see the puddles. We'll take a look at this view back this way. Uh, this is one of my favorite spots to get pictures of Waikiki. 
Uh, it's just like you see all of the beach here, you see the beautiful curve of the sand, you see all of the hotels, you see people laying out on their inner tubes. It's really just classic, classic Hawaii right here. But uh, down this little walk, uh, in this little corner of it, it often has some pretty good um, boogie boarding waves. So you can see there's a couple of boogie boarders here. And let's see if he's gonna catch that wave. So if you're trying to boogie board this little spot next to uh, this viewpoint is the place you're gonna want to do it. All right, well, fellow explorers, there we go. Let's check how much sweat Chris says on his face a lot after walking all of Waikiki. The rest of it right there, a little bit of sand just that way, uh, but then that's, that's the end of all of the hotels. So, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of my videos on Hawaii, you'll find links here up on the screen or in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye. And if you liked this video and appreciate all the sweat that came down from my face, please leave it a like on your way out. Thanks.